All right, welcome to another weekly tier list. This is week nine of the current spring 2024 anime of my personal enjoyment of the most recent episode. I know that the cutoff is kind of weird. Some episodes are on like week 10, like seventh prints and stuff. It's just because I'm doing it on Tuesday, but it is what it is. I'll be judging them in the order of my preference from peak, great, good, mid, and dookie. Starting off with Kaiju 8. What do you guys think about the most recent Kaiju 8 episode? I think that Kaiju 8 is minimum great, if not peak, last episode. Every episode has been delivering. The pacing is cracked. I've never seen... Well, that's a lie. I've seen other animes where the pacing is great. But in this season of animes where all they're doing is stalling and fucking padding the watch time. Finally, we got a show that doesn't bullshit around. Every episode is just so impactful. Go, go, go. Kafka versus... Hoshina, I wish that happened a little bit longer, but it is what it is. We also had the introduction of some crazy red colored, you know, Kaiju that's also speaking. And we had Mina and, you know, Kafka. I think that I'm going to put it in peak. Kaiju 8 has always been peak. It's either going to be great or peak. I feel like maybe I should put it in great, but I'm going to put it in peak night right now and things can change later on. Level 2 cheat. The most recent episode was yesterday right i'm gonna put it in great for now what happened the most recent episode it's the you know who's actually carrying the fake hero and what's her name suya or something his quote-unquote gold digger who i don't think really is a gold digger anymore i think she's actually a compassionate person who is genuinely in love with the fake hero there's something like that there was also frio and you know um Fenris in their different forms, like Wolf and Adventure, fighting on behalf of the princess without, you know, giving us credit or giving the princess all credit. And then a little bit of setup stuff with the Dark One and his younger brother. I think I'm going to put it in great for now. It was a great episode. I don't think it really went over the top because it was not supposed to even be a pop-off episode. It was just kind of set up. I think it was great overall. Seventh Prince? Silpha fucking. She just something else. I'm putting this shit up here, man. Even though Lloyd did not fight, Sylpha did. And, oh man, oh man, the Sylpha animation, bro. Langry style, hug as well as a crazy sword techniques, and her being able to copy these 8th tier demon skills, man. How does she do it? She doesn't even have the Sharon gun. She can just do it, though. Sulfa is just peak fan service, even the scabbard with those frillier laces coming around. How do they make the sword play so erotic? It's just so good. I love anime swordsmen, towards women in this case. And Sulfa, perfect. She fucking carried last episode. Mushoku Tensei? I think it's safe to put it in peak last episode. Rudy pissing, sorry, Roxy pissing herself, me missing out, freaking out at my chat and trying to make some kind of rant content. Rudy coming in clutch to save, you know, Roxy. Daddy's cool moment with Paul and Rudy. Ha Tall hands checking Rudy's fucking ass in front of Rudy's dad in the same room. I don't know. I felt like last episode was a reunion with the members of the crew that we haven't seen in a long time. It was a wholesome reunion. A lot of death likes happening, but also really, really good pacing last episode. I enjoyed every moment of it. I'm surprised that we're already in the teleported labyrinth. It's like S rank danger. And we've saved our princess. And she said that that's the way that she wanted to be saved. The next episode with Roxy and Rudy, it's gonna be very interesting. Wonder what she's gonna think when she realizes that we're married, or maybe we we just we just keep that a secret. All right, Windbreaker, also peak. There's too many peak episodes. It's not fair, and this isn't me glazing it. Maybe it is. Then again, we did curate shows based on our personal interest, and it's we like we dropped the ones that doesn't even do well. And it, I, right now, like these are honestly, like, it, it's a, it's been actually such a peak week. Every episode is actually popping up. They're not setting really stuff anymore. It's just going crazy. Togami's flashback was so sad. Choji's flashback? It was... It was okay. But what put me over the edge was Togame in Choji's flashback. Trying to, you know, make sure the broken glass pieces stay together. As that represents their family. She's told and oh my god, when I saw that, it was like... <laughs> Togame is actually hard carrying. Umemiya, listen, he's not even trying to fight. He's just being a therapist. And 
there was some good lands had happening from Umemiya, but they're being... It's really interesting how they're keeping the power scaling obscure by having Umemiya just take the hits and be a pacifist and try to have therapy session for these kids rather than him going all out. That's why I keep saying, somebody got to kidnap that girl. <laughs> you know, the childhood friend of Umemiya that works the Umurai shop. Somebody got to kidnap her so that Umemiya can go all out. I think last episode was a solid episode. Definitely peak. I enjoyed Windbreaker so much. It's crazy how this anime about delinquent fighting is delivering so hard. Because the core of this show, even though the fights are amazingly choreographed and animated, it's the stories, the impactful flashbacks, and what these groups are all about that people really get immersed into. Choji Togami flashback, it was fucking peak. I don't even care about my main characters. Sakura and them? Fuck them, bro. I care about like the Shishi Totem flashbacks a lot more. Date alive. It's peak! It's peak! Every episode has been fucking peak. The revelation of Toka being still alive, talking to... Not, it's Tenka, but we shouldn't know that because I've been spoiled. And then her going out and fighting him and doing that. She, Te, to, Toka, like, basically took on the powers of other captured spirits and then came out with it. And that's how she was able to contest Mio and how Mio's crazy domain expansion wasn't really working as effective against her. There was also Kurumi showing up and clutching. Oh my god. Kurumi showing up. <laughs> Using, what was it? Um, I forget, was it Vav? No, Vav is the final skill we use. But there was like Alf or something, the one that sends you forward in time. When Kurumi got donated, she immediately passed the bullet on to a different clone. That clone then got sent into the future, which landed where we were in the present moment for, with Shido and Toka versus Mio. Kurumi shows up. And then basically gives up a little hint, mentions something about a kiss, right? And then gets donutted. And I'm like, no, Kurumi, how could this be? But then Shido's like, oh yeah, I got Zaf kill, baby. We use Vab, we go back into the future, and now it's time to take Rene out on a date so that hopefully we can entice Mio and Rene and everybody about the wonders of polygamy and having multiple waifus. We can share, guys. Mio, we don't have to just have you. We can have every girl. And if we can convince that, then maybe there's a happy ending after all. Misfit of Demon King Academy. Fuck. This shit was peak too. It came back after a hiatus. It, it did all the shit that I loved in Misfit of Demon King Academy. Like, the dumb, goofy-ass comedy, the power of love, like, it's just so funny. It's peak comedy. The misfit of Demon King Academy that I love are the moments where he's basically like, uh, it's more slice of life and comedy oriented when I enjoy it more. Because when they start going into all the different mechanics of gods and spirits and fucking different shit and all the rules that I forgot, it's hard to keep up with. But the comedy stuff, everyone can just enjoy. I loved it. Shin and Anna is proving that their power of love through friendship overrides, you know, Misha and Rei. It's so funny. And what does, uh, Mi what does, sorry, Misa and Rei. And what does Anna say? Anna is like, y'all need to stop being so scared of, you know, showing your love in public. You need to start making out in public and make and just like holding hands. And I'm like, well, what the fuck is going on here? I think that was the implication. Next episode, I think we're going to see Lei and Misa be a little bit more touchy-touchy in public. Konosuba felt like a fucking season finale. This shit was peak too. Like, I'm not even trying to glaze these shows right now, but for whatever reason, this week's of anime, Everything was just popping off, like across the board. All of these animes, I can genuinely say they were peak enjoyment. Konosuba episode felt like a finale. We have like the equivalent to destroy alert, destroy alert. We need everyone outside to, you know, save everyone. And then we fought the Hydras. And there was a little bit of a background plot of Darkness trying to rush this quest one last time with a friend so she can go back home to do something else. But having all our villagers come out and help out, it really did feel like a Konosuba finale. It was a bit of a... Not anticlimactic, but a little bit of a sad ending and a confusion as Darkness now left us yet again to do something. I think something bad is happening with her dad or family, but I'm sure we're going to go there and save their family. Maybe it's not even a serious issue. Maybe it's some kind of dumb issue. But this part, bro, holy shit, it felt like a finale episode. Remonster? I'm not going to put it in peak. I'll put it in great. 
I'm pretty critical in Remaster whenever they kind of stray away from what they're good at. And what is Remaster good at? The evolution trees, hyping us up with different forms and powers. I don't really care about the fights, but I do enjoy the degenerate controversial moments. For example, this episode, twins got pregnant and then we're doing like a live delivery of babies on the carriage. It's not... Like, pregnant girls isn't a controversy, but it's more of like, who got impregnated? It's these human girls that all grow like kidnapped it and then they have now kind of fallen under Stockholm Syndrome and we told them that we can, you know, stay at the village and that's why I'm starting to realize why we stopped at the human village before the pregnant episode happened because if we didn't give them a chance to at least say, hey, you know what, you can stay here if you want or come with me if we didn't give them the option and we just had them pregnant, that would have caused for even worse moments Remaster was pretty funny last episode I genuinely enjoyed it I'm gonna put it on great I'm gonna put it on great Mahoka What happened with Mahoka? It was... Set up. It was set up. The setup. Did anything crazy happen? Not really. A lot of yapping. A lot of setting up for what's going on behind the scenes with the Yotsubas, right? We're entering a new arc right now. I'm just gonna mid or good. If I can't remember something from the episode, that's a, probably a bad sign that nothing really interesting happened. I do remember seeing Aunt Maya. I do remember Onisama and like getting hunted. Uh, well, we're trying to like, or, or potentially our cohort could get hunted down by these external threats, right? Stuff like that was happening. That's right, Baldi Ninja's getting more into the story and stuff like that. But aside from that, it's kind of a snooze fest. Kind of a snooze fist. I'm gonna put it in mid right now. A new gate? I am proud to put new gate at great if not peak. I feel like I should put it on peak. I think new gate deserves a slot in peak this episode. Shin versus Gerard. I did not expect such emotional impact from that episode. I thought they would do a goofy ass fight where Shin just overpowers the enemy and I'm like, okay, cool. And then goodbye, Gerard. But it's like, no. The soundtrack. The overall direction, it was so emotionally heavy. Gerard willing to do one final duel with, you know, his best friend Shin before he dies. He even almost landed the blow, if not for his, you know, him at the end of the road. He almost, he pretty much won the fight, I think. But he couldn't finish it because his health declined at the end. And Shin had to go all out at the end and, you know, make sure Gerard gets his warrior death as he passes on to the afterlife. It was such an emotional moment. It was actually great. If not peak, I think I'm gonna put it in peak. Also, Shini Feet at the end. Yes, Shini Feet. The soundtrack, I think, really carried last episode. It truly did. Skimichi, yesterday's episode. Bro, this shit was peak. What is going on? It's a week of peaks. Straight up. Every episode has just been fucking popping the fuck off over and over and over. I don't understand. Damn, bro, like, how is this happening right now? Hibiki power up was not even that, it wasn't even the most peak thing, but it was pretty cool. Her, what's her color? My panties are black. All right, here's your fucking power to, you know, get the motions to buff you. But the common rider Sentai outfit from Makoto, him barely even caring about the fight with EO. EO using the rose thing to go all out, but thank God we debuffed that because I don't want EO to die. I think EO is like a rightful, righteous person. He just happens to be on the wrong side. Makoto not even trying, using Mio's random uh, gadgets and skills that we're just trying to figure out, right? It's pretty, pretty fun episode. Root giving Hibiki stuff like that kind of also introduced us how Trash Moki got his nuke powers. Shiki was actually popping off last episode. Shiki was absolutely popping off last episode as well. I really enjoyed that. And now we're also getting a lead up into Sophia Bulga and Lancer. Well, I'm not sure if Lancer's around. Maybe Lancer's gonna get his 1v1 later. But it's looking like Sophia. And if you look at the opening, Sophia like cut down Makoto's like helmet, you know, the shield thing, the common rider. So it actually did happen in the episode as well. So we're in, we, we can use matter, mana matter now. We can go all out. And Lancer is a new form in the opening. He was the last person we fought. So maybe it's gonna be two separate 1v1s. It's gonna be so interesting. Demon Slayer. 
<laughs> mid or dookie? Mid or do I... I don't think it's dookie. Is it mid? I... <laughs> what? I just... Listen. I understand the limitations of the adapting a short arc like this. Where it's supposed to be a movie, but they decided to do eight episodes, right? So, of course, the pacing's gonna be trash. So, they decided to add in more anime original scenes. And I thought what would be really interesting to do is have more interaction with the Hashiras. And they are doing a little bit of that, right? Last episode, not the most recent episode, but the week before that, what did they do? We had Sanami and Iguro talking hype about the uh, Infinite Castle. Wasn't that anime only? There is more anime only scenes with the Hashiras that are enjoyable. But like, holy shit, Tanjiro and... Like, ta ta Tanjiro and Muichiro fucking... Just throwing airplanes, n not once, but like 10 times. 10 times. Like, like they actually... Multiple times to stall the episode, they, they could get the watch time padded in. I was like, oh my god. This is such good animation, but the story is just so... Mid right now, and I know why it's mid, we just explained it. They're, they're limited in what they can do, but like, fuck, dude. Fuck, dude, like, shit, it's it's getting pretty bad. The, I would want to see the, yeah, if there is like an upper moon training arc instead, if I could see what the upper moons are doing in the, you know, the infinite castle, and we did see the new lady, right, that goes bang, and she has a bunch of creepy eyes, and her hair is like using as a guy to do vision and you know, espionage in her village, but... These recent Demon Slayer episodes, man, it's, it is um, quite lackluster, and I think it's a fair judgment. I don't think Demon Slayer overall, if I saw the movie, I probably wouldn't rate it down here, but these each individual episode truly are suffering because of the format that they decided to pursue. Tensura. It's going peak. Absolutely, it was peak. All of these episodes managed to pop off at the same week. Holy shit. Diablo did pop up, but do you know who the MVP of the episode was? That's right. It was that NPC ninja, the demon hunter guy. Because he understood the significance of Diablo and what a primordial demon is. We were able to get such a big highlight of Diablo even more. Because if he, did, if he wasn't there, then no one would really know Diablo. He'd be just some strong guy that would just off-screen everybody. Thank God for the Demon Hunter for understanding the lore of Tensura and be like, It can't be. You mentioned Rouge and Blanc so casually? An Arc Demon cannot do that? That must mean that he starts fucking passing out. It was so fucking peak. It was actually so great. Ranga versus the 5,000 troops. It was just going zoomies. He just wanted to play around with the, uh, what's it called? It was just playtime for me. It wasn't even a sincere battle. Gabiru and Gopta didn't even have a chance to fight because Ranga took it out. I feel bad for the 10 battle sages or the holy sages of what they are. They're actually pretty mid compared to us, right? Elf Bride. Elf Bride, Elf Bride. Raphael revelation that he was the guy there, but we don't have the full flashback just yet, right? Raphael versus Zagan. I'm going to put it on great. I don't think it was a... Was it a peak episode? Am I just... When I'm just comparing, I think it could be, but I'm putting too much up there. I think that it's fairly great, if not peak. I'm comfortable putting it in great. They had an annoying cliffhanger, which is not a problem, but Raphael's gonna give us the backstory of what actually happened in his vision and why his name is Raphael and why... Sorry, or 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 Orobas as well, right? He takes his name Orobas, which is also... Uh, Valifor's dad's name, so I don't think it's as simple as he just killed the Orobus. There's something more to it. Orobus maybe wanted that to happen. Raphael may be atoning for something that he didn't want to do. I'm not sure. There's got to be something more sentimental that we'll find out in this week's episode. Blue Archive? I'm gonna just put it on good. The Aquarium date, while it was cunny, nothing crazy was happening. It was mostly set up, setting up death, not death flags, but flags. I, I think it's fairly an enjoyable episode. Nothing crazy happening, nothing bad was happening. I think it's fair to say it was just good. And it's setting up for the future episodes. Sentai? I'm gonna put it in great. Sentai... The, the plot right now with the Duster boss just wreaking havoc in the dorms and having the blue junior take him, take him out just a bit in the wings. And then, what was his name? Kagumo Kuro Koguma. Koguma, right? The short afro hair guy who I thought didn't matter into the story suddenly casted such a highlight onto him. And 
Exus also has taken on his form right now in the next fight. There's a bunch of stuff, bunch of... This show keeps like catching me off guard because I'm not paying attention enough. Like the alarm actually not going off. So we yoinked the key back when the enemy key yoinked it from us in the beginning. It's like Psycho is a fake alarm or something. The fights are great. The backstory as well that's making us think about why is the duster boss here when they should have been all gone 12 or 13 years ago what is going on with that right why is red keeper seemingly also keeping this a secret something more has happened a long time ago that we're not really sure about so it's keeping us very interested i'm enjoying it i think it's safely on the great episode yeah and as well as the burst in the sword at the end when he's smacking on the ground that was pretty funny the kuro yuri arc right now yosa could have peak or great ah uh... I think it's safely great. Was it peak? I feel like it could be peak, but I why am I putting this on great? It was amazing. There was pop-off moments, but the pop-off moments did not scale as hard as some of the other shows I'm watching here. For sure, Yozakura was amazing. The daughter's earrings, absolutely. Kurugawa's backstory, I completely empathize with him. And that's how you write a compelling, quote-unquote, antagonist. I know what he's doing is bad, but a good villain is someone that is so compelling due to their backstory where you can acknowledge that they're evil as shit, but you can understand why they turn evil, and even to a point where you might even start rooting for them. I thought that Kurugao was a fantastic antagonist, finally, that had an over-encompassing arc, and people are saying it's gonna get even better from here on out. And the mysteries of our parents' death and how Kurugao was sniped in silence, but we got a note. The note was for the daughter's, you know, grave or something, I forget. But also within the tree, give us another message that could lead into our parents, you know, mystery. So, Yusakura is definitely cooking. It's definitely getting better and better. It definitely could be in peak, but because there's so many episodes in peak right now, and I'm fine comparing it to these, I don't think I enjoyed it just as great as that, but it was definitely a really great episode. I'm going to put this one in good. Appraisal Isekai... It was extremely dialogue heavy, and dialogue heavy is not bad. Previous episodes were dialogue heavy as well. It really highlighted the diplomacy, the mind games, right? We had the, not the Mishian guy, but the other blonde guy who was apparently forced the signature, who was gaslit, and we brought him with us to then challenge the dude from Mishian and be like, Ha! You fucking lied to us! There was a bunch of mental games there. But for some reason, I was not really so engaged with the story. Maybe it's because they were throwing around so much geography and politics and diplomacy going on all at once. But it's not like I wasn't paying attention. I could keep up with it, but I just didn't have some sort of inclination that this was a great episode. It was not a bad episode. I think it was a good episode. Viral hit. Oh, it's gonna be here. I don't know. Was it great or was it peak? Tezong versus Hoban was very exciting. He even did the stupid ass ass sponsor at the end. It was really good. And and then it's like Moonsung was also the person that took down Tezong before in the MMA fights, right? And that it threw the same whole baseball chokehold as well. I feel like oh, peak or great, peak or great. Fuck. The fight was crazy. I'm gonna put it in peak. I'm gonna put it in peak. It was a really great episode. Maybe we need another tier between peak and great. I'm not sure. It was a really great episode though. I, I'm, I think I'm gonna put it in peak. I think that this is a good representation of, again, the most recent episodes that we've watched in our channel and how much that I've enjoyed it. I'm not talking about whether or not these animes are objectively good. I'm talking about my personal preference and enjoyment. And I can safely say all these animes, fucking six, what is this, 11 animes right here? They were genuinely all that good. I'm not even trying to glaze these shows. They all have been building up and they've all popped off at the same time. They were actually genuinely all that fucking good. These episodes as well, they were extremely enjoyable. I'm glad to see Remonster, you know, reclaim its degenerate throne and get back to entertaining us with the roots that they had. Blue Archive and Appraisal, they weren't bad. It's just that I didn't feel something special or as engaging as some of the shows above. And Mahoka and Demon Slayer. Ugh. Demon Slayer, I feel like... Demon Slayer has a valid excuse for being mid. Demon Slayer can only be mid because of the... 
the structure, the pacing of the amount of content they have and how much they're stalling to stretch out the anime episodes. But Mahoka, I don't feel has a fucking excuse. And Mahoka, I'm still keeping up with it because people are saying, bro, I'm telling you, even though season two is bad, season three is all set up, I'm telling you, season four is going to be so fucking good. I don't know, man. I feel like a lot of people are not even going to get to season four, bro. People have dropped this show. I feel like I should fucking just drop this show or something. But I have a personal love for season one, and I just want to see this show get back to its glory. And we've seen what Mahoka can be. Even in season three, there were some really high fights, like the Shippo versus the Saigus episodes, right? That episode was fucking peak. It's just ever since then, it's just... I don't know, man. It is what it is. But that's it for this week's of tier list. And I will see you guys on the next week.